Amen. Well, happy birthday. I will, I will give you a great birthday present. I will not sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> and Diane's got a birthday this week. And Jacob, who uh, spoke uh, Wednesday night to the youth and knocked it out of the park. Um, we, uh, we're going to plan him for September 15th. He's going he's gonna to hit Sunday night for us. Amen. Told him he's not in prime time, but he's working closer to it. That's a good thing. Steve's got a birthday this week. Bless you. Ricky Davis. I thought I saw Ricky come in. Happy birthday this week. So David and Diane both have birthdays this week. Y'all plan that? And Sean, Caitlin. He's older. Is that right? Much older. 20 years, 30 years older. If we're going to lie, that's like good, you know. Erica, happy birthday to all y'all this week. Amen? We have been talking about vision. Now, one of the first things that when people um, think of vision, they think of seeing into the future. And we want to have vision for the future. Now, that's simply one aspect of it. But usually that aspect is incorrect if you do not have a proper relationship with God. What you are looking for, what you are want, what we need is to be rightly related to him. Not just to know him, but to know him in an experiential way. Not just to know about him, but to have a life that has been blessed by walking with him, by listening to him, by reading his words, by acting on his words, by praying and listening as the Holy Spirit speaks in your life, by seeing the blessings of watching others live their life and learning from those lessons and being encouraged by being around other people who can speak life into you. All that is a, a vision of seeing and knowing God, and that's really what we want. More of God, less of us. For Him to increase and for us to decrease. That's what we're looking for. And that's really what I've been talking about. Now, we're going to look at a very familiar passage but I pray that God speaks plainly and clearly to us. If you have your Bibles, you can stand with us or you can follow along on the screen. John chapter number 6. We'll begin in verse number 1. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were diseased. Truly, that must have been an eye-opening moment. Whatever the disease was, it didn't matter. Christ was the answer. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in numbers of about 5,000. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish. Listen to this phrase, as much as they wanted. Mark took his Sunday school class to the Dillard house yesterday, and if they didn't eat all they wanted, it was their own fault. Y'all haven't been in the Dillard house, they load you up, all you can eat. And as Jesus said, and it was good, right? So when they were filled, he said to the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, now hear this phrase, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Let us pray. Now, Lord, we know this story, 
For those of us who've been following you for a while, we've read this story many times. We've heard it taught many times. We've heard it preached many times. And Sir, we believe it. it. It speaks of who you are. You never find a deficit. You are the increase. You never find a need that's too big for you. You're the God who provides. Lord, I pray that we see that. I pray that we understand that. But God, give us eyes to see today not just the provision. Help us see the provider. And Father, see beyond simply a story to see the King of glory, the author of the story, the, the one who made it happen, the lifeblood. Lord, the one who died, the one who rose again, and the one who saves. Lord, we are your people. We are the sheep of your pastor. I pray we will hear your voice. So speak to us personally, God. And I do pray that my words, that my heart, Lord, that you would overflow and use today. Father, we'll give you all the glory for it. You're the only one that deserves it. So speak as only you can. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. Jesus spoke many times in many different ways when he was on the earth. He was really a street preacher. I don't know any other way of saying it. He would just uh, go and walk in his day, and everywhere that he went, people would follow. And every time the people would follow, he would, uh, he would love them, have compassion on them, meet their needs. If they came with whatever need it was, it, when it was brought to him, he wanted everyone to know that you don't have to go searching anywhere else. He is the one who can provide. He is the great God who can do all things. All things are possible. Listen, what's the last part of that? To those who believe. He was a street preacher. And sometimes he would uh, preach in the synagogues. We'll talk about that in a moment. Sometimes the crowd would just find him and he would say, let's look, use this as an opportunity. Sometimes he would, he would see a, an illustration from nature that was there. Sometimes someone would come before him. Or sometimes he would see a situation. Uh, this particular instance, he saw a situation. 5,000 men a, as well as women and children. And, and they were far away. There was no place to get food. And we all get hungry. So he asked one of them, Philip, what are we going to do? How are we going to feed these people? He used that as an illustration. But sometimes when Jesus would talk, he would share in a parable. He would tell a story that had a meaning behind it. And the point was to hear the story but see the truth. It's just a story if you don't see the truth. One of the most famous stories, listen to me, in all the world is the one that we know of as the prodigal son. All the great writers through history have, have sa said that in such short words, such few words, one of the greatest stories, one of the greatest meanings, but you and I both know that that's more than just a story. It's a story of our father who had not just one son. One son gets all the notor notoriety, but really it's a story of two sons. But most of the time, the outside world, they just hear a story because they never, never really gather the truth of the story. And these people had lived their life a certain way. And, and Jesus always pointed to God. He never pointed to anything else. Every story, every dialogue, every sermon, every illustration, every healing, everything that Jesus did pointed to God. Now, you're here today because this church points to God. Amen? Amen? Everything that we do points to God. The, the small group, the Sunday school, it points to God. The stories that were taught, thank God for our teachers. We had 91 on campus. Uh, I think we had how many, uh, like 62 off campus, something like that? Amen? 
I praise God for that. I praise the ones that were working here. I praise for the ones that were going to the, the nursing homes and, and letting know, them know that we see value there and we love those people too. Praise God for that. But it all points to Him. Every song needs to be pointed to Him. See, so, or uh, uh, Donna, you did good. I almost said, I did say so. Donna, you did good. Praise God for that. Praise God for his amazing grace. But if you're not careful, listen to me. We can make it be about a lifestyle. We can make it be about religion. We can make it be about us and miss the truth. And there's a life of no meaning. And we could all leave this building today and give a great big so what. Y'all hear me? I mean, I'll do the best that I can. But if God doesn't pour through me, and I know that if he can speak through a donkey, he can use me. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. But really, what matters is do you have ears to hear? You can, I know that this is the most powerful, it is, the inspired, infallible, inerrant Word of God because it stood up under so much shabby preaching. You can even hear the truth, though it may not be portrayed as well as it should be, because truth will stand out. If you have an ear, you'll hear it. God will speak. You can see a billboard in a few seconds, and God can take that and, and make an un unbelievable work in your life of truth that of something that you saw it's amazing how God works listen to me now if you have ears to hear so Jesus found himself there and all of a sudden these people are coming to him and he he moves up on the mountain and must be a, been a very beautiful place filled with grass what did he do he healed what did he do he taught them the gospel, some of the other gospels said it had been like about three days that they had been there. Morning, noon, and night. God, morning, God, noon, God, night. That sounds like a revival service to me. And, and you would love to be there. Amen? Now, listen. What are we going to do? How are we going to feed these? He used a need to point to God. He wanted to use an illustration. Now, Church, listen to me. That he, he put it to the disciples. He didn't put it to all. He didn't have a, a vote of all 5,000. He went to the disciples and said, what are we going to do? Philip, what are we going to do? Andrew got involved in it. Really, all of them got involved into it because they came back and said, it, it takes too much. 200 denarii, 200 days wages wouldn't be enough just to give them a, a little bit if we had a place to get it. Send them away. That was the response. Send them away. Jesus said, no, 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 you give them something to eat. So he's putting them in a situation. He's asking them what the answer is going to be. They didn't have an answer. What do you have was Jesus' words. Andrew, I don't know if he said it sheepishly. I don't know if, but he said, we got one little boy with, five barley loaves, kind of like a little dinner roll, and two small dried fish, a sack lunch. We got a sack lunch. But then he says it, and, but what is that among all this group? Now here's the answer. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. That's what they should have seen from the beginning. But they missed it. Now it gets better. Jesus took it. They got to see the power of God in him. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to the disciples. They gave it to the people. And everyone ate to the point that they were full. And if they were Baptists, that was a whole bunch. I mean, they're sitting there watching it happen. You know there was a buzz. Where's this coming from? There was a kid that had a sack lunch. 
What? Jesus is up there praying, and he's breaking it, and he's putting it into the basket, and, and he, what I'm giving you came from five barley loaves and two fish. You know there was a buzz. You know people were interested. Everyone knew what was going on. Listen to me. Everyone ate. Everyone was satisfied. And everyone knew where it came from. To the point that they said, verse number 14, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Now, was he more than that? Yes, he was. But can you see the moving toward it? They, they saw the event. They could not deny it. This is amazing. This is from God. Well, they should have been changed. Amen? They should have been different. Well, what they wanted, what they wanted, let me say this again. What they wanted was to take Jesus and make him king because they said, if he can do this, this is the kind of leader we need. And they were looking for a political answer. They were looking for an economic answer. They were looking for someone, even a social answer, who would treat everyone the same. And they were going to take him and make him king. But Jesus, that wasn't what he was there for. He dismissed them. He, he, he put the disciples in the boat. You know the story that follows this. And he went up on a mountain to pray. Later on, he came down the mountain, went out walking on the water past the other disciples. They had that encounter there. They found themselves on the other side. Now, pick up with me in verse number 22. On the following day, when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except that one which, he, which his disciples had entered, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but his disciples had gone away alone. Now they're saying, how in the world did he get here? Right? He didn't leave with them, but he showed up with them. That's one of those things that makes you go, hmm. By the way, there are things that you will go through in life that will make you scratch your head, and you'll say, I do not understand. That's okay. That's okay. As long as you define it as, and yet Jesus was working there. Because Jesus can take the things that you don't understand and bring wisdom to it. Now, I just said that and you just missed it. I can tell. Well, let's keep going. However, other boats came from, the, from Tiberias near the place where they had ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. And when the people were therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into the boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. In other words, everybody's starting to find out where he's at. and Everybody's wanting to know where he's at. So they're going. Verse 25, and when they found him on the other side, one of the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And instead of answering the question, listen to me now. Once again, they missed it the first time. He's going to give them another opportunity. He's going to speak truth to them. To see God, God will use illustrations to get, let us find truth, but sometimes we'll miss it. Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. You're looking for me for the, for the handout. Why in the world would you go so far not to see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, but just what comes from his hand? Come on now, listen to me. All they could see it was what they wanted, not what he was trying to give them. Y'all ever have problems? Y'all ever have circumstances? Y'all ever have difficulties? Y'all ever have estrangement with friends? Does life come up and give you a curveball? It's not really what you were expecting. Do you believe that you can go to God and find the answer? Or are you looking just for Jesus to do something for you that you want? Well, he, he's hitting them right upside. He said, all you want is food. You're, you're coming... For not, you're not coming from me. You're coming from the handout. It's coming from my, Look what else he says. Do not labor for the food which perishes. 
How many of y'all have a job or had a job? How many of you worked your life and worked hard? You men, you provide for your family, your ladies, your, you do the substance for, all, for your home. And you're grateful for that. And is, is that a good way? What did Jesus say about those who didn't work? Well, not Jesus, but the Word of God. Don't eat. You're not willing to take care of yourself? All right then, don't eat. Is that a truth? In our society today, it scares me to death to see that there are people who are looking for someone else to provide for them when God has given them an ability to walk in life. But even as we walk in life and work, it's more than just a paycheck. It's more than just security and a, a home and cars and clothes and freezers full of food. Not freezer, freezers. It's more than just having a hobby or two or five or ten. We've been given this thing called life. And it's not just about us. Thank God for life. Thank God for the gift of life. Thank God for the freedom of all the things that we can do. But are we living our life for us or are we living our life for him? Are we living our life doing what we think or are we seeking to be related to the one who can do all great mighty things? Most of the time, people are living their life for themselves and they don't even realize it or know it. I could even say it up here in front of everybody and you can say, yeah, well, huh, what? Well, it gets better. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. There's something more important, a relationship with God. If you're looking simply for the things of this world, buy new clothes that wear out. Buy a new house that will fall apart. Get a new car. It will become used the moment you buy it. It will go down in value day one. Everything in this world falls apart. Find something that matters. Find something that lasts. Find something that's real. Find something that goes up in value, not goes down. A walk with God. Then they said to him, verse 28, what should we do that we may work the works of God? That sounds very religious, doesn't it? What are we supposed to do to work the works of God? Well, he, answer, he answers them very plainly. Verse 29, this is the work of God that you believe in him who he sent. That could be the end of the sermon right there. They ask a question, and this time Jesus did not, he, he didn't mince words. He came with a very straightforward answer. You want to know the, the, the work of God? Believe. You know the, need, the greatest need of all the church, in all the churches today? Believe. Not just saying it, living it. Letting it be real. How many of this, how much of this do y'all believe? All of it? How much of it are you living? Some of it? Now, that's not meant to be rude. I'll say the same thing. But I'm on a trek for moving from where I am to where he is. Morgan, you did a good job with the offertory. As far as my ears were concerned, it was perfect. Amen? Now, she probably would say it wasn't, but I didn't rec recognize it if it wasn't. But I can tell you one thing, in all of her time of practicing, she was striving for excellence. Are y'all good? That's how you get there. You just don't walk up, sit down, and just play like she just played. You're striving for something. Now he said, that, that they asked the religious question, and I'm not sure if they really were looking for the answer. What is it, the, what, what's the works that we're supposed to be working? Just believe. Does that sound simple? As we say it, is that a Sunday school answer? One of those things that just sounds simple? Easy preaching, hard living? 
It's where when, when we get in the things of life, people say, yeah, preacher, I know that, but. And then they want to tell you their circumstances. You, you don't know, preacher. Well, I don't have to know, but I do know the answer. Right? And as you're on this journey from where you are to where he is, you'll find, if you believe in him, you'll find the answer. A lot of people, a lot of great people have been asked the question, if you could live your life over, what would you do differently? Billy Graham was asked that question. He said, I would read my Bible more and I would pray more. That sounds like a pretty good answer, amen? You know what my answer would be? If I could live my life over, what would I do different? I would seek to live out and trust and believe what I already have learned from him. That's what I do differently. The regrets that I have in my life are the times that I saw truth but I didn't live it. How wonderful it must have been to, to walk and see Christ. How would you have loved to have heard one of his sermons? How would you have liked to have been there when he broke the bread and, and the fish? And I believe the Holy Spirit added a little taste to it. Amen? Because they kept eating it. It wasn't like, ugh, this is what you gave us. I mean, it, if it came from the hands of God, it was good. How would you have liked to have eaten of that? Would you have had gospel bumps all over you? He's doing this with a boy's sack lunch? But how quickly they moved away. How quickly they moved back. Who were the people that Jesus had the most trouble with? The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, who were the people who transcribed the Word of God, the Old Testament. Religious people. Those should have been the people that were saying amen the loudest. Why could they not listen to the Lord God? Because they were too consumed with how they saw it and what they heard and what they wanted. Now, please follow me here in the next few moments. Did Jesus seek to make it even easier than those words that he just said? Because those words that he said were just absolutely plain. Verse 29, this is the work of God that you believe in him who he sent. That was plain. Did he seek to make it more plain? Actually, he didn't. Verse 30, therefore they said to him, what sign will you perform then that, you may see it, that we may see it and believe? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. They're just... All right, you proved it. You just took five barley loaves and two dried fish and you fed 5,000. But no, 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 that's not good enough. Show me again. Prove it to me again. How many times has God proven himself in our life and that was good for one situation, but then when the next situation comes up, we, it's like we forgot everything. He thought, Lord, prove it again. Verse 32, Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. <laughs> no, my Father gives the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Once again, they sound very religious. Verse 34, they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. He's, who's he talking about? When, when he says, my Father gives you the true bread from heaven, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Who's he talking about there? Himself. But they're still looking for yeast rolls. 
You know those melt in your mouth with the butter on top? Amen? Lord, give us this bread. He makes it plain. Verse 35, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. <laughs> and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Is that what he said? Look at verse 40. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. How many of you in this building understand what he's talking about? This is the will of God, him who sent me. Everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up the last day. We understand salvation, don't we? They're like saying, what? Now, is what he's saying true? Yes. And with hindsight, we've, we see the cross. We know what he did, and we understand that. But yet we still have this same issue and the same problem. Do we believe in salvation? Do we believe that the blood of Jesus can take away all of our sins? Do we believe that he is the bread of life? He is the provision. We don't have to look for another provision. He is the provision. No matter what your need is, you understand that he can fill it. Then why are we still battling the issue? Why in our everyday are we still consumed? with our circumstances, overwhelmed by our circumstances, still wanting it our way. This Word of God says, lift up Jesus and, and love others, forgive others, be kind to others, but yet we'll be kind to the ones we choose to be kind to. We'll love the ones we choose to love. We'll give to the ones we choose to give, and we have all rights to do that. You see, we're breaking it apart on what we can believe and what we won't believe. Y'all starting to hear? So did Jesus make it easier? No. Nope. Verse 41, after he just told them verse 40, which is salvation, verse 41, the Jews then complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. They're complaining, griping, fussing. They said... Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it that he says, I have come down from heaven? Verse 43. Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. <laughs> Quit your murmuring. Quit your complaining. Quit your fussing. Look down in verse 48. I am the bread of life. You're going to have to believe this one by faith. I, I wish you could kind of not see it as we see it and we've studied it so much. Put yourself in their shoes and listen to verse 49. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh which I shall give for the life of the world. Verse 52. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Are they getting it? No, they're still not there, are they? He told us to do what? So did Jesus make it easier? Verse 53. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat this flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed. My blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So he who feeds me will live because of me. Well, excuse me, feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. That's just as clear as can be, right? No. I mean, we look back. What does he mean when he, he talks about his body being broken for us, eating that flesh? 
That's the cross. That's the body that was broken on the cross that we have to accept and make it our own. The, the blood, drinking blood, well, hold on. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We understand what that means. But all they wanted to hear was what they wanted to hear. Now, you're saying, Pastor, this is tough. You better believe it's tough. What would it have been like if they said, Lord, help me here? I, th that's tough. I, explain that a little bit better. You ever been in a class when there's somebody in the class that didn't understand it and raised their hand so the teacher would say it again? Then all of a sudden, everybody else is going, yeah, we got it, we got it. That little hand would go back up again. I, I, I still don't get it. How many of y'all remember algebra? Now, don't remember the finished product. How many of you remember the beginning of algebra? There was numbers, and we were pretty good at numbers, and then they put the alphabet in there too. You may have been the one said, I, I remember so vividly i was like lost i was like what it, it, huh i was the one back there kept raising my hand but i also remember when the light came on and, and it made sense y'all got me and from that point on praise god for a, my first algebra teacher helped me understand that because from that point on it just built on those fundamentals. Verse 60. Therefore, many of the disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you see the Son of man ascend where he was before. Come on, let's fast forward a little bit. He goes to the cross. What happened on Resurrection Sunday? Up from the grave he arose. Forty days later, he took his hands. He raised them up. <laughs> the law of gravity was suspended. And that same Jesus who rose from the grave went back to glory. And they saw it and witnessed it. You see, I believe he said that because there were some that were going to believe but were still having trouble. Peter was here. He believed, but he was having trouble. Right? But when he saw the Lord ascend back to glory, he remembered these words. And after 10 days of prayer, he preached a sermon on Pentecost and how many people got saved? 3,000. It is the Spirit who gives life. Listen to me now. Here's the conclusion. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. When I go to glory, you can leave this frame behind. Amen, hallelujah, praise be to the Father. All the scars I leave behind. Brian is not... Defined by having brown eyes and graying brown hair and bow legs. <clears throat> That's not who I am. Some of you see the real me. And if I look at you, I'm not going to define you by how well you dress or what house you live in or all that fleshly junk that really doesn't matter. The only thing I'm taking to heaven with me is my spirit. And I praise God, I hope I, I, my, the spirit of my wife, I pray the spirit of my children, I pray the spirit of my grandchildren. But hold on, I want to take a church with me. I want to take a whole bunch of folks who haven't seen him yet believe. 
I wasn't there when he fed the 5,000, but I believe. And I can look back on Calvary and I understand why he did what he did. I understand what he meant when he said, eat my flesh, drink my blood. I understand that now. I understand that he is good. I understand that he's great. I understand that I can trust him. And I'm willing to repent of the things of, in my life that are not where they should be and look forward to those things of what he's doing in me. It is the Spirit who gives life. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And there are some of you who do not believe. Look at verse 66. From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked from, with him no more. Many of those who were following him as disciples, not just the 12, there was a large group that was following him everywhere that he went. But it says many of them turned back. I'm not going to follow this guy anymore. This is too hard. I just don't understand it. He's not saying the things that bless me. Surely nobody would have that attitude today. People leave the Lord all the time because they really never fell in love with the Lord. They heard about him. They may have prayed a prayer, but they haven't found the good, good father that I have. Then Jesus said to the 12, do you also want to go away? It's almost like he's going to say to us at New Holland, are you going to leave me too? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? If we're going to leave you, where, who, where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have come to believe. Come on, that's where he began. That's where he began. Verse number 29, this is the works of God that you believe in him whom he sent. Verse 69, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. God, I might not know it all, but I trust you. I love you. So, Lord, I, I might have to raise my hand every now and again and say, I don't understand. But, Lord, I know you'll help. We need to have vision of God, who he is, what he's doing. Are you perfect? No. Are you striving for the perfection of God? Are you striving for more today than you had yesterday? Are you striving to love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength to love others? Have you given your life? You may have said, I want to give my <coughs> sin to you, but have you given your life to him? I mean, you want to give your sin so that you can be forgiven, but what about serving him? What about having all of him? I think we miss it. See, I came today and I really didn't try to make you laugh. I came today and I really didn't try to perform for you. I used a lot of scripture. And I understand that when you're, when you're listening, there's a short period of time that you can hear. I understand that when you hear that much scripture, it's hard. I didn't try to make it any easier on you. Because I knew that there were going to be some people here today that were going to hear, thus say the Lord. God's calling you from where you are to himself. So let me just ask you, is this a hard say? To letting Jesus be the all in all? Do you have a true vision and understanding of him? Are you still looking for your will, your life? Are there things that if God asked you to do, you would have to contemplate it? Or could you say, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give? How much of the word of God are you seeking to live? There may be some of you, like me, the regret that you have is that there was a lot of truth that you knew, you just didn't choose to follow it. So maybe from this point forward, maybe that's going to be your, your desire too. Just to take what you already know and believe and trust and just to the best of your ability seek to follow it and 
walk it out? What could God do in us? Do we need change? Yes. Do we need repentance? Yes. Do we need brokenness? Yes. Do we need Christ? Are we like the disciples? Where else will we go? Who else holds life? Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, I pray that in the next few moments that you could speak personally to us. I pray that in the next few moments that we will believe. Lord, we may not understand all of the particulars. We may not understand all of the circumstances. We may not have all the answers, but we know the answer, and we can trust you. Father, give us a heart to repent every day. Give us a heart to hunger for more of you, that we can eat of you every day. Lord, I don't want us to leave the same way that we came. Lord, you are spirit and you are life. That's all that lasts, that's all that matters. So Lord, speak to us in spirit and in truth. Lord, begin it. Start speaking to the minds of your people. Let them know that you love them. Remind them of the areas that you've been working with. Father, this invitation belongs to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.